integrity. Having integrity is something that is revealed to us in our gospel today. And in fact, the whole of the scriptures that we proclaim today, which are fulfilled in our hearing, has something to do with being people of integrity. That our internal disposition, the things that we value, manifest themselves in our Christian living. That what is important to us on the inside is made real and present on the outside, being people of integrity. And in fact, um, many of the teachings of Jesus and his sometimes difficult relationship with the religious leadership of his day had to do around things like integrity. In today's gospel, we hear about the many um, aspects of kosher living. Kosher living, which is still very important for our Jewish cousins still today, has to do with cleanliness, eating good food on clean dishes, having our bodies, our hands, our feet clean. Now, in the book of Exodus and certainly in the book of Leviticus, those two um, early books of the Bible talk a lot about the prescriptions of the Lord. And Jesus is not um, poking fun of them or not saying to us um, that they have no importance. But the reason we do religious practices is so that God is glorified, that God is revealed to us. And in fact, those religious practices like making sure that our hands and bowls and sheets and feet are clean, in fact, we even have a, a common expression today that may be rooted in these kosher practices of Judaism, is that um, cleanliness is next to godliness, that it is important for sure um, to follow these rules but it is meant to bring us to a closer relationship with God so that we can serve others. Jesus points out that defilement doesn't come from dirty dishes or not washing our hands before supper. Even though kids, we should always wash our hands before supper. But that's not where defilement comes from. Defilement comes from within ourselves when we don't allow the life of God in whose image and likeness we are made, when we don't allow the life of Christ, whose brother we become in the waters of baptism, when we don't allow the Spirit of God who is in us and around us, when we do not let the life of the Trinity influence our outward actions. In fact, in the early Christian community, um, this letter from St. James emerges. Um, a disciple of Jesus, and he says, religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. So what Jesus is pointing out today um, to his hearers is that we can certainly follow um, the practices of our ancestors. We can be um, practicing kosher rituals, which is not just about the food that we eat and how it is prepared, but also all the rituals around it. But the purpose of that, the point of all that is so that we are closer to God. And if we aren't being getting closer to God and then bringing that closeness to God to life in the world, then what point is it? He says that it is only from within that these unholy things come. Evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within. Not from outside of ourselves, but from within. And they are the ones, they are the things that defile. In Jesus' day, um, certainly, I mean, this is somewhat true today, but um, particularly in Jesus' day, if one was widowed or orphaned, they had a tough time. 
the whole stability of culture in Jesus' day and the foundation of the family had to be that the husband provided for the family. And if there is no husband, there is no provision for the family. And one of the things that scripture scholars tell us about that first century as Christianity was emerging from Judaism that people really loved about the early Christians is that they took care of particularly the widows and the orphans. They took care of one another. They shared everything in common so that others might have what they needed to survive. And St. James is telling us religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Much of St. John's um, gospel um, kind of focuses our attention. He, um, he's a master at um, giving us these beautiful nuances, um, these turns of phrases. So St. John oftentimes refers to us as we are in the world, but not of the world. And again, when we think about that every day, that we certainly live in the world and the world has its own values, but we are not from the world. We are from God, children of God. And just like um, St. James says, and to keep oneself unstained by the world, the world values um, are not always ours as Catholic Christians. You know, again, sometimes, and I, and I know that um, we that come here each week um, certainly value other things than the world, but the world sometimes tells us to do anything we need to to get ahead. Cheat, lie, steal, whatever you need to get ahead. That money, making money, having power is the most important thing. But those are messages from the world um, where we do not come from. We come from God. God's life is in us because we are made in his image and likeness. And nothing from the outside can defile us, only from the inside. So may we be people of integrity. May what we believe be manifested in our lives each and every day, in our families, at our workplaces, in our schools, no matter where we find ourselves, may that be true. There's a little bit of a Catholic joke about uh, people who come to worship um, regularly at church. And you know, you know the true colors of someone once they get out into the parking lot and need to get out onto Electric Boulevard, right? I mean, that joke about, well, look how they act in the parking lot. Perfect opportunity to practice integrity, um, to be the people that we are called to be, not just on the inside, but the outside as well. So may we work on that this week. May we practice and think about, pray about, um, where does integrity come from? And if we recognize that great gift from God, may we put it into practice so that the things that we believe, the things that we care about, are made manifest in the world because of the things that we do, because of the things that we say, as to gather, we travel with Jesus to eternal life.